What's going on, guys? This is James Allen. I am recording this on Saturday, June 14th, 2025. Today, I want to talk about an article I saw that recently spoke of the fact that NFTs, most of them have no liquidity. They're not selling. Uh, they're basically just dead art. And before I get into the commentary as to why that is, because the article didn't cover why these NFTs are not selling. It just says, you know, we looked at the statistics and the NFTs have no liquidity. Before I get into why, I'm just going to read a few excerpts from the article that explains the statistics that's actually happening. So here we go. So the title, 98% of 2024 NFT drops are effectively dead, report shows. In 2024, 98% of NFT collections saw little to no trading, underscoring an oversaturated market. Only 0.2% of NFT drops were profitable, signaling a challenging landscape for investor gains. Most 2024 NFT drops lost over 50% of value within days, highlighting reduced speculative interest. So if you look at the article, like the briefs, uh, it basically said uh, 98%, which is virtually all of them, aren't selling. And, um, you know, their value's dropping like, 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 like stone, like a rock, right? And, you know, they kind of hinted that the reason for this is uh, oversaturation. And when you look at the article, I'm going to leave a link in the description. They looked at about 30,000 NFTs. They analyzed about 30,000 NFTs and came to the conclusion that most of them are just dead. They're, they're just stones not moving anywhere. But they never really gave a reason as to why that is. And this is what this video is for. I'm going to break down why the NFTs are not selling because uh, someone with my, my background, I'm a software engineer and I'm a cultural historian. Uh, I think I stand in a position where I could talk about what's going on and I'm currently facing a situation where the protocol I'm trying to help and in that computer ghosted me when I'm reaching out trying to help them saying, hey, I could give you the product you want and the users and I could showcase to other technical founders how I'm using your chain to do wonderful things. So I feel like this article with the NFC situation is a great example where I could show some of my expertise both as a software engineer and as a cultural historian. So Let's get into the why. Why aren't these NFTs selling? And it's really just two reasons. It's very simple. The first one, these NFTs are not grounded in culture. That's the most important point. None of these NFTs are grounded in culture. And art is something that must be grounded in culture. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that an art piece, and that's what NFTs are, they're just digital art pieces, they must mean something to a group of people, the group of people being the subculture, right? They must stand as a symbol that means something for a group of people. And that's how an art is rooted in culture. But all these NFTs are not rooted in culture whatsoever, right? There's no meaning. There's no context. There's no, uh, there's no symbolic reference to what this is standing for. They're not rooted in culture whatsoever. And that's the first fatal flaw. The second fatal flaw is that there's not a story around them, right? An art piece shouldn't just be rooted in culture. There should be an evolving story around the art piece. What I mean by that is there should be critics of all kind talking about it, um, uh, amplifying its context, uh, evolving a story, giving meaning. So there should be all sorts of critics, literary critics, uh, social critics, technical critics, giving context and story around the art piece. And in fact, this evolving story is what makes art pieces get sold and retraded, right? We all know that markets move on stories. Again, market move on stories. And if there's no story around an art piece, there's no liquidity. Liquidity stands for nothing but belief in motion. Liquidity is belief in motion. As people's belief um, uh, changes, the liquidity fluctuates, right? So, and what makes the belief change? The story. So the art piece not only needs to be rooted in culture, it needs an evolving story behind it because that evolving story is what affects its liquidity. Of course, there's other elements like social proof, you want reputable people holding the art piece or showcasing the art piece. There's, there's other elements. I'm not saying there's not other elements, but these are the two major ones. It must be rooted in culture. 
you know, it must be, it must mean something to a group of people culturally. And two, there must be an evolving story around it because the evolving story was, is what gives the art liquidity. And this is why all these NFTs are dead. They're, they were just cash grabs, right? As opposed to people building culture. They were just cash grabs as opposed to people building a culture around an art piece. They were empty. Now, what usually happens, right, is people, rather than build culture, right, they, they treat things as transactions, you know, and investors are very guilty of doing that, most especially, right, because investors tend, think, tend to see things as transactional. They fail to see people as stories, as, as evolving stories, and they also fail to do the same thing for art. Now, what is my credibility? If you look at my YouTube channel, you will see I've done videos on many art pieces, many culturally significant location and landmarks such as the charging bull uh in new york city the uh, wall street i've done a story on that and i've even interviewed the person who casted the charging bull he gave me a one-on-one -on -one. uh i've done a story on the uss intrepid and many other culturally important uh locations i did a story on the georgia guidestones before it was vandalized and eventually um uh, demolished Right. I did. A, I flew out there to nowhere, Elbert County, Georgia, and did a story on a Georgia Guidestone, took a few drone footage and covered the context and story and why it's um, uh, significant and what's the story behind it. Art is about story and being culturally rooted. And I have the video uh, on YouTube to prove that thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people watch my um, uh, culturally significant um, uh, content. And I'm also a software engineer, so this qualifies me to speak on a subject. That being said, if you're a Web3 founder um, uh, and you would like to hire me as a consultant for your Web3 blockchain project, I could certainly help you. That way you don't ship dead apps or dead dApps, I should say. My fee is 300 an hour. It's actually pretty cheap considering um, uh, the expertise you're going to get. And I think founders know, you know the value you're getting. I've gotten so many people... Uh, you know, who, who'd hired me and they never complain. One thing I'm also noticing, right, is some people actually book a one on one with me. And rather than talk about their blockchain project or um, some sort of technical question about a, a blockchain, they just talk to me. They just reflect to me. So if you if you want to hire me just to talk, I'm fine with that, too, because I see a lot of the people that do hire me. Uh, they just want to talk. So if you want to hire me to just talk, that's also fine. Just know I'm not going to decrease the rate It's going to stay at 300 an hour. Uh, before I go, I also want to say if you're an investor, and you have capital. I have a Web3 project that has enormous potential. Uh, I just need some backing so I could like stop being a one man show. You know, uh, I've done a video uh, giving a glimpse of what the Web3 project could do. It's called Why Web3 Founders Need to Think Different. My email is in the description. So you're also welcome to reach out. In any case, my misfits. Oh, before I go, there is one last thing I want to mention. I'm glad I caught that. What I'm realizing in this Web3 dilemma is that we have a situation where engineers don't know culture and artists don't know code. I'm going to say this one more time. Engineers don't know culture and artists don't know code. And hopefully I could be the gap, um, I could be the bridge between the two and, you know, help them work with each other and communicate. In any case, my misfits, that's all I have for you in this episode. Don't forget to press that like button and support me on Patreon. I will see you next time.